Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Last week I did a video where I've opened up some mail and showed you some patterns that I've received. And in there was this needle pouch. So this was sent to me by Janet in Queensland. And she's given me permission to recreate this. Now I didn't have the pattern for this one, so I've just gone and taken the rough measurements from this and created a needle pouch similar to this one. So come along and I'll show you how to make this needle pouch where we've got a section at the top there for putting your needles and also storage compartments in the bottom to put all of the different needle sizes that you've got. Come along. Here's what we're going to use today. I have a 16 inch length of ribbon that is one centimeter wide or three eighths of an inch. You need a piece of flannelette in my case, I'm using a waffle weave fabric because I don't have any flannelette. But if you have that, you'll need 18 inches by four and a half inches. That'll be used to put your individual pins into. Then for the back and front of our needle holder, we need one piece each at 18 inches by seven inches. That's for the inside. And that one will be the outside of the needle holder. I'm using a very lightweight fusible pallon here that is also 18 inches by seven inches. And the other thing we have is some, uh, some strips of fabric at two and a half inches. For the inside of our needle holder, we want two strips that are two and a half inches wide by 18 inches long. And then for the binding all the way around, I'm going to use a combination of fabrics I don't have enough of this fabric to use for the entire pocket so and I'd really like to use the same two fabrics so I'm just going to use a mixture of fabrics for my binding these are two and a half inches wide if you've got enough fabric to do yours to go all the way around then have two strips of fabric by the full width of your fabric which is about 44 inches so you'll want 88 inches by two and a half inches and I'll show you how to join those in a moment. And the last thing you'll need is a piece of tulle or netting so that you can actually see the needle case through the fabric. Uh, I've just got a really lightweight netting here. I didn't have anything else. You can use a curtaining, uh, just a nice lace curtaining, but anything that's really lightweight that you can actually see the needle case through will work perfectly and you need 18 inches by two and a quarter inches for that. The first thing I'm going to do is join my binding pieces. So to join your binding pieces, you can just join them together and have a straight seam down the bottom going straight down here. When you do that though, we're going to be folding this fabric in half like that and it'll be folded over again. When you've got two fabrics here joined together, you're going to have a lot of bulk of fabric. To distribute that bulk more evenly, we'll take one binding piece, and I'll show you with this one. We're going to take the other binding piece as well and lay that over the top like that. So you've got one going in this direction and one going in this direction. I find it easier to overlap them just a little bit so if you overlap your fabric, then you can see the points. You can see the intersecting point just here and here. If you mark a line from this point here to this point here, we're going to sew directly onto that diagonal line. And if I show you this with a pin, so if we imagine you've stitched along here, your fabric We'll have a nice diagonal line on the inside there and you'll have a nice straight continuous piece of fabric and when you're folding all of these we'll cut this off when you're folding all of this fabric later all of that bulk is going to be distributed over a couple of inches of fabric rather than in one spot it'll make your product sit flatter and look a lot nicer so that's how we're going to join our binding strips now I'll go back to using this one here. So I've got right side facing up. This is the right side. I'm going to have that face down. Overlap them. 
and that line that you can see there will be my stitching line. So if you've got all your fabric the same colour, that's fine. You just have right sides facing and you'll have one going horizontally and the other one vertically. Stitch down there and when you join the next one, have your fabric right side up. So this is the pretty side up. Take the other piece and have that right side down and mark the same line. So you'll join all of your strips together like this. It's a great way to get rid of binding strips from previous quilts. So you can go and join all of these together in this way. Let's take this to the machine. Okay, with our fabric strips stitched together, we can now cut off the excess so we're just going to cut about a quarter of an inch from the stitching line on all of the joint pieces. Then we can finger press that open or you can use your iron. So whether you've used one colour for all of them or you've attached lots of small strips of fabric, you'll apply the same technique for the whole lot. So you can see I've had to join quite a few pieces together that are quite short, but I need to get enough pieces to make it long enough. And you can't tell once it's joined. So the idea of the diagonal join here is that we're going to take this to the iron in a minute. We're going to fold this in half. And if I just finger press that for now, you can see the diagonal line that I've got here. When I fold this in half, that entire seam line is going to be distributed over those couple of inches there. So I've got a diagonal line going across here and then across here. So there's really only one thickness of seam along here. Then when I fold this again later, you've got the diagonal line coming along here and going up there and then going back down again. So it just makes it a whole lot easier to sew and it looks a lot better in the finished product than when you have a straight seam. Okay, what we need to do here is take our long strips and fold them in half lengthwise. So we'll take them to the iron and press all of those. And we'll also press the shorter ones that are 18 inches in length. So we'll just fold those in half and create a nice crease for them. We'll also take the flannelette or the waffle fabric fold that in half lengthwise and create a crease for that as well. And I will fuse the stabilizer or the pallen onto the wrong side of the main fabric. So I'll go and iron all of these bits and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I've ironed all of the pieces that need ironing. So the really long continuous strip has just been folded in half and the raw edges are meeting at the top there with the fold at the bottom. The pallen has been fused onto one side of the fabric and the two 18 inch strips of fabric. I folded those in half just like we do when we do handles for bags. So we've actually got the raw edges folded in half, then folded in half and I've pressed that all the way along. And the raw edges are fine if they're still raw. Now we can take our netting or curtaining and our flannelette fabric. We're going to open out your binding strip, place the netting over the center of your fabric, line that up all the way along. Be careful not to stretch it out. You just want it to sit down over the top and then fold that fabric over and we'll clip it in place. Take the waffle or flannelette fabric and we'll do the same thing. I'm going to use the folded edge first because that way I can manipulate the other edge if I need to later. So open that fabric out and place the folded edge inside your binding piece. Clip it together. Okay, we have both of the binding strips attached to our little, our other strips. And I might just mention here, 
I've got two layers of this flannelette or waffle fabric because I want it to be thick enough for the needle to sit in there nice and flat. It'll still work if you only use one layer. If you don't want to do double layer like I've done here and just a single layer like I've done here, cut both of them at two and a quarter inches. We can take this to the machine and we're going to sew all the way down that long edge here and along here and you want to make sure that you actually catch both sides of your fabric. So we want to catch the back layer and the front layer at the same time. Okay, the binding has been attached to both pieces of fabric so you can see the stitching has been caught on both sides there and on this piece as well. Take your lining piece or the inside piece of fabric and we're going to line up the waffle fabric on one side and we're going to place the other one on the other side. So what we want to do is have the binding strips in the center on both and have the raw edges on the outside for both pieces. We want to find the center of our fabric. So we've got an 18 inch strip. We want to mark nine inches. So this here is the center of my fabric. And I've just marked a line right across there. We now want to make some more marks along here so that we can fit our needle case just along this edge here. The needle case is just under one and a half inches in width. So with the needle case sitting at one and a half inches in width, we only need to make it a little bit wider to fit the case in. So following on from this line that we've drawn, we're going to measure one and three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to line up my ruler at one and three quarters of an inch on the line that I've just drawn and I'll mark that line going right across the fabric like we've got there and then I'll use this line as my next marker. I'm doing one and three quarter inch increments all the way across and I'll do the same for this side. With that done, we want to make sure this is nice and straight right across the fabric. I'm going to pin each section because we're going to start sewing a lot of lines here. As you do that, it's going to cause the fabric to distort and shift. So if you pin each section, it'll help prevent that. And it's not necessary, but if you want to, you can secure the ends down as well. It'll just help keep everything in place when we put the binding on. With the little pockets all finished, you can check that they fit in there. And it doesn't matter that we haven't closed it up at the bottom because we're going to do that now. So take your main fabric. We're going to place that right side down and the wadding or the wrong side faced up. And we'll place the pocket section directly over the top and line it up evenly all the way around. And pop some pins in place just while you line it up. So we can pin all of these layers together now. And I'm just going to start from the center and work my way out. So lay that down nice and flat, pinning that together, and then I'll pin the outside sections as well. With everything pinned neatly in place, we're now ready to bind this. So take one end of your binding here with the fabric folded in half, and we're going to place the raw edges along the raw edges of our needle pouch. 
If you've got any joints in your seam, you want to try and keep them away from the corner of your pouch. It just helps prevent that excess bulk because we're going to be turning on the corners. So I'm going to start around about here. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to clip my fabric in place around about here and I'm going to leave a tail of about four inches. So we don't want to sew that section yet. So I'm going to clip this together just up to the corner. You don't really even need to clip this. I usually just place it down as I'm sewing. So we're going to take this to the machine and start sewing this binding all the way down here, around here and around to the other side and come back to the top edge again. And when we've come back around to the top edge, we want to have a good amount of fabric left over at the end and we're going to stop sewing before the beginning again. So we just want to have a good amount of space unstitched here. When you're sewing the corners, and I'll show you this at the machine as well, as you're stitching down here with your quarter of an inch seam, you'll stop sewing a quarter of an inch from the edge there. Take your needle out and cut your thread. Then we're going to flip the fabric at that point there and fold it down again and then you'll start sewing down here again. So all we're doing, sewing to within a quarter of an inch of the end, then you'll flip your fabric, fold it down, sew down to within a quarter of an inch of the end, you'll flip and fold and you'll continue that all the way around. I'll show you that when we get to the machine. The other thing we want to do before we actually put the binding on is take our ribbon and fold that in half and we'll attach it to the back of the short edge. So just bring that around and find the center and I'll clip that in place for now. But when it comes time to sewing the binding on, I'm going to sew that piece of ribbon on at the same time. So I'm going to leave a tail of a few inches and then just sew a quarter of an inch all the way down. When you get to within a quarter of an inch of the end, stop your work, take it off the machine, and then we're going to flip this piece of fabric up and away. I flip that up to create a triangle kind of point. Flip that fabric back down again. And you want the fabric lined up straight along the edge that you've just sewn and also straight along the edge you're about to sew. So you've just flipped it and folded it. And then start with another quarter of an inch seam until you get to the other end. Back stitch. One more time here. We've come to the end. We'll take this binding piece, flip it up, and then flip it back down again. So it's just a flip and fold. When you get almost to the end on the last side, we've got a couple of inches of tail here and we've got a couple of inches of tail here as well. Okay, you can see here where I've flipped the fabric up and then folded it down. You've got a little triangle flap all around all four corners and that's what we want for our binding strips. Okay, now I've got a great big opening along here. This is such a small project, so I don't have as big an opening as I would normally like. About 10 to 12 inches would be ideal. Then we'll decide which side of the binding we're going to keep. And I'm going to trim the last leg off to about halfway. And using the remainder of the fabric that we've cut off, open that fold out. You only need a small piece. So just open that fold out and find where the fabric overlaps here and place that over the top. So I'm just going to show you about halfway along the fabric. So you can see here my binding finished and this one is overlapping. I'll mark a line here so that you can see, but normally you would just go and cut straight through that. 
So I've used the width of my current binding as my gauge to determine where my binding piece is going to be cut. So there's the fabric underneath. That's a continuation of the beginning. I've marked a line there and I'll just cut that excess off. And I now need to join these two bits of binding. Okay, we've got our binding piece trimmed. Once it's been trimmed and you've got that little bit of overhang, take this piece, open it out so you've got the wrong side faced up and take this corner here and bring that up to the straight edge so that you've got a nice 45 degree angle. And we'll just finger press that crease. You can see there's a nice crease going along here. That will become our stitching line. Take this end here now and we want right sides facing. So we've got the fabric on the fold. Bring that fold across to the edge of the fabric here and you can open that out and we'll line up those two pieces of fabric here. So we've now got them positioned in the same way that we have had when we started doing our binding pieces. So we've got a straight edge along here and the straight edge along here and that will be our stitching line where that fold of the fabric was. I'll just show you that again. We'll open that out. We've got our ending fabric here. Open it out until you see the raw wrong side. Fold the corner up and make a nice crease in there. So now you've got a triangle of fabric in there and we want the straight edge here to line up with the straight edge there. And the straight edge that continues on the binding will line up with this edge here, but on the single layer. So open out that binding piece, line up this straight edge here with the straight edge you have here, and this straight edge along here will be the straight edge along the bottom there. So you can pinch the quilt together just to make it a little bit easier for you. So we've got the triangle and the straight, So you can see what I've done here. I've brought the short straight edge in line with the long straight edge. You can see that fold line that I created earlier. That will become our stitching line. I'm going to take this to the machine now and I'll just quickly go and do that. On that fold line here, I'm going to sew from one side to the other and then that will open out and be the finish of my binding. So there you can see I've sewn that diagonal line in place. Before I trim off this little bit of excess fabric, I want to make sure that it's going to sit nice and flat. So just lay it all out and fold that down so that it sits nice and flat. And if you're happy with everything and it's not ripply, then you can go and trim off that excess. And we'll trim that off about a quarter of an inch from the stitching line, just like we did earlier and finger press that seam open again and lay that down nice and flat. And then we can take this back to the machine and sew from here to there. So we're just going to finish up this section here. And I'm just going to quickly go and do that now. I'll be right back. Okay, the binding is completely attached now and all we have to do is finish it. So you've got two options here. You can do it by hand or you can do it by machine. Usually quilt bindings are finished by hand because they look much nicer. So I'm going to show you how to do this by hand, but I'll also show you how to go and do this by machine. Okay, I'm just using a single strand of thread and I've tied a knot in the end of it. Binding stitches, ideally when you finish them, shouldn't be seen. So take your needle and we'll come up on the folded edge of the fabric somewhere underneath and you don't want to pull your fabric too tight either. We're going to bring the binding from one side around to the other and place that down on the edge of the fabric. And we're going to come in behind where the binding finishes and come up and pick up the thread 
right on the very edge there. So I've come up from behind, which is just below the binding edge. So where I've come out, right here, I'm going to go underneath the fabric on the diagonal and come up again there. So you're not going to see any of these stitches. Keep on going. So I'll come up, go underneath the fabric on the diagonal. Imagine this is the underside of the binding here. So I'm going to come in with my needle on the diagonal there and come up like that. There's a fair bit of thread underneath the fabric, but I'm not going through to the bottom layer. So I'm just coming across on that very edge of the fold and you can continue on like that. Pick up your fabric on the very edge of your binding and you can see on the edge there that the red stitches are barely noticeable. When you get to the end, you can see here how the fabric is folded nicely. That's because you did that flip and fold on the other side earlier when you were applying the binding. You want to come to the end and then fold that binding across so that you have a nice mitered edge on the, on the very corner there and you'll keep on sewing all the way around all four edges. So that's if you want to do it by hand, which I highly recommend. And if you want to do this by machine, then we're going to take this over to the machine and fold this over to the other side. Have the folded edge very close to the edge of that stitching line here. So we'll fold the fabric over, clip it all in place, and then we're going to stitch really close to the very edge there. You'll probably end up seeing the stitches Use a thread that will match the other side. So you don't even need to clip the edges, just follow it along. You'll be able to see the stitching from the top and just have your binding really close to the previous stitching line. When you get close to the very edge, you can come forward and then back stitch a little, leave the needle in your work where the fabric comes out to a 45 degree angle point press that down and just bring it across fold it up and match up those corners as best you can then turn around and continue on And here is the finished product. So the binding has been attached by machine on this one. I don't really like attaching bindings by machine. I don't think it's very professional. Uh, I would much rather finish my bindings by hand. But here it is. Our needle pouch, as requested, all finished. I've got an assortment of different needles that just slide into this little slot down the bottom here. So as I said, I've just used netting because I didn't have anything else to use and curtaining would work perfectly as well. You wanna be able to see through. And along the top here, we've got our little needles corresponding to the needles in the compartments down below. If you have a whole heap left, you'll even be able to fit them in like that as well. So there is our little needle pouch, all finished, and you can roll that up, take it to craft, holds heaps of packets too, and then you can just tie that closed. You get the drift anyway. <laughs> there you go, a really cute little needle roll. Thank you so much to Janet for sending the original needle pouch down. This is it here. So Janet's is much nicer. She's finished the binding by hand and it looks much more professional like that. If you're going to make these, I do really recommend stitching your binding together by hand, the finishing of your binding together by hand. Uh, but needle pouch, all done. You guys can choose which way you'd like to make it. I hope you've all enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.